science fiction tells us brains are scary. And science can't tell us otherwise because... We don't know nothing about the human brain. Alison Watry should know. He's a neuroscientist. We don't fully understand how the brain works, and I think that's part of uh, the reason why you're so scary. But for the brain, we see that massive, mushy tissue, and is that it? How come it creates everything that we know? How come it creates uh, who we are? So I think that's the scary part. You know? To alleviate those fears and to uncover some of the mysteries of the human brain, Watry was inspired to create mini brains in the lab. So we don't like to call them mini brains. We prefer the terms a brain organoid because we don't want to give the impression that what we have is a fully mature, organized brain a dish. Okay, I stand corrected. Organoids. But it's experiments like these that inspire sci-fi scenarios like this. Her brain kept alive by experimental science. And then science fiction can prompt a scientist like Moitri to philosophize about his own work. How do we know that we are the way we are and we are not uh, brain organoids in a brain farm uh, just receiving some artificial stimulus like the Matrix? Whoa, right? I, I love that movie because it makes you questioning what is real, what's not. And um, what I think it's so funny is that there is no way for us to know that. <laughs> Funny in a way that gnaws at your brain and makes you ask more questions. One of the questions Watry had as a child was about how the human brain compared to that of our primitive ancestor, the Neanderthal. I remember reading about them and get fascinating about the Neanderthals and, and thinking to myself, wow, I mean, one day would I be able to talk to them? Can we bring them back from the past? So this was a perhaps naive thought for a child, but as the technology evolved, you could use some of these tools to get at least partially to those answers. Wanting to get answers inspired Watry to become a neuroscientist, and now he has state-of-the-art tools and technology at his disposal. So we are inside the tissue culture room. That's where we grow the brain organoids. And just how does one come up with the idea of growing a brain in a dish? It's funny that you ask that. I was, I was thinking about that. And to be honest, uh, some of the work that I'm doing now, I remember thinking about those experiments when I was a kid. Uh, there is a little bit of um, uh, inspiration from science fiction as well, because uh, the more you read, the more science fiction gets to you and, and incorporates into, into your thinking, right? And um, so it's no surprise that some of the experiments that we have here was inspired by an episode of Star Trek or things like that. You can see how Star Trek could inspire him to combine an organoid and a robot. The robot is using the brain organoids to coordinate the four legs. So by having the robot exploring the environment, we are continuously stimulating these organoids. And our hope is that as we do that more often, the organoids will mature because now they're receiving some kind of input information. That seems like the stuff of science fiction, which raises a familiar sci-fi moral dilemma. Can you take an experiment too far? Uh, how far is too far for these organoids? Will they ever reach a level of acquiring consciousness or self-aware, or can they suffer or feel pain? So these are, are good questions, and um, right now we have no evidence that is the case. But uh, it is a possibility that in the future, as we mature and we improve the model, that they might acquire those things. And if they do, we have to agree on, on uh, what is uh, the, the level of consciousness that they have. Uh, and uh, probably we need to give them what we call a moral status. What is the moral status of these organoids? Those are big questions to wrestle with. As I leave Mwatri's office, he shows me one last item, a photo revealing ancient viruses in brain cells, which prompts the question, What are these ancient viruses doing in our <laughs> brains? <laughs> That's a question both science and science fiction can have fun tackling. Meanwhile, let that virus infect your brain and see what results. Beth Accomando, KPBS News.